Hello and welcome back to Ra Ra's Adventures Visiting Locations. Thank you for joining me. We are back. This is our first visit. I'm so excited. Before we start, if you'd like to help support Ra Ra's Adventures, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That will really help support us doing our visits and everything else that we do. I'm not going to go through all the COVID information. I will leave that in the links down below and on my website because basically it takes up too much time and we've got some fun things to do so i checked out their website before this 10 um, to see what disabled access they offer or have and this is what i found i have quoted this from their website so i give you the right information we welcome mobility scooters and wheelchair users and visitors with limited mobility. However, the Woodland Trail and the natural forest environment may pose difficulties for some visitors. Please telephone the park prior to your visit to discuss your requirements and we'll do our best to help. So today I have brought my mobility scooter, which is here. So we can share with you what it's like going around on a mobility scooter, how bumpy it is, how easy it is and accessible it is. They also offer discount rates to visitors with disabilities and their carers, one carer per visiting adult or child with disabilities or special educational needs. I also wanted to share that a registered assistant dogs are welcome to visit the New Forest Wildlife Park. All dogs must wear their harness or uniform and be, a, and be on a short lead where needed. Assistant dogs identification or registration may be requested. And for the welfare of our three roaming wallabies, wolves and lynx, dogs are not allowed to walk through the wallaby wood. Please ensure your dog does not upset other visitors or our animals. As we go around, we'll be sharing the different things to see and do here, interactions, play, etc. And showing how the scooter gets on, also showing what the toilets are like, parking, gift shop, calf and how accessible they all are so what are we waiting for let's go do this okay so before we go in i just want to share a little about the work that they're doing to help the animals so i have quoted this from their website so i give you the right information we are passionate about wildlife and conservation at New Forest Wildlife Park and we want to encourage our visitors to learn more about the conservation too. Many of our animals such as the giant otter are on the IUCN endangered species red list and we are doing our best to help breed and conserve them for the future. We are the first park in the UK to send a captive bred giant otter to an international breeding program abroad. Katura, a young giant otter born at our sister's park, the Chestnut Centre in Derbyshire, was sent to Impar Valley Zoo in Port of Spain, Trinidad in 2013. At the New Forest Wildlife Park, we work, we work closely with all the regulatory authorities to make sure our animals receive the best care. Some of our animals, such as the European bison, may also be included in international captive breeding programs in the future. These programs are strictly controlled to ensure good breeding stocks are available for species under threat. There are also other conservation projects in the New Forest Wildlife Park are working on and I will leave the links down below on my website. 
So let's go explore. <laughs> are the public disabled toilets um, as you can see there is a ramp I'm not allowed to show you inside for legal reasons but I can show you the outside okay let's carry on Okay, so we're our first stop now because of COVID, we are doing a clockwise one way system um, just for safety reasons. So, our first stop is the South American giant otter, which he isn't out at the moment, which is fine. I'm sure we'll get a video of him later or a picture. I will find something. So let me tell you a little bit about the giant otter. The giant otter can eat up to five kilograms of fish per day, but will also eat crabs, small mammals, and snakes. They live in a family group of 15 to 20 otters. They are most vocal of all the otters. As they keep in contact with their group by constant chatter. Habitat destruction and hunting for their fur are major causes of their decline. Mm. A little bit about the giant otters. So now we're going to carry on going. Just like I said, my mobility scooter is doing really well. This ground isn't too uneven or having track problems. It's all going all well. Okay, so let's carry on.
we are at the Asian short clawed otter family set of otters which you will be able to see um, otters are semi aquatic animals eating fish frogs and crabs small birds and mammals fun fact otters don't just have whiskers around their muzzle and nose they have a few stiff wick whiskers on their elbows too this helps them to detect vibrations in the water of moving prey okay so we're going to see what else we can find oh little update scooter is doing amazing the ground is suitable for the scooter and wheelchairs easily um even small uh little scooters would be quite happy on this ground i reckon okay so we're going to carry on let's go Okay guys, so we have stopped at the Snowy Owl. He's so gorgeous, I really love him. Um, this is a stunning large white owl with black markings and yellow eyes. And it's designed for the cold environment with fully feathered feet and feathered nasal area to keep it warm in the cold arctic conditions. Female is a larger and more heavily marked than the male which gives her good camouflage when she lays her eggs in melting snow and ledges. He is absolutely stunning and I'll let you have a good watch. Okay, so we have stopped at the Scottish Wildcat. He's not actually out to play, we can't find him. Um, we'll turn around in a minute and maybe you'll spot him, but we can't see him. So, a little bit about the Scottish Wildcat. The Scottish Wildcat is a subspecies of the Wildcat found throughout Europe. Although the wildcat in general is not threatened, the Scottish wildcat is in danger of extinction and may be down to its last 40 individuals. It's protected by the Wildlife Countryside Act of 1981. So we're going to have a little plan round and maybe you'll spot him because we can't actually see him.
So we've just found these owls. They're called eagle owls. And did you know they're the largest owl in the world? And the females are the largest out of the two sexes. And the female is the largest out of the two sexes. And they stand about 76 centimetres tall. It's big. Their wingspan is up to 200 centimetres long. Wow. So I just thought I'd share a little bit about this owl. It's, it's humongous and beautiful. So just give you a little view. Okay, so we have just stopped at the Corny Owl. Now, he is up there. I don't know if you can see him. I hope you can. We're trying to get the best shot we can. Um, so this is an adaptable owl and it's the most common owl in the UK. They hunt small mammals, birds, frogs and insects and the female may have up to nine eggs which once, once hatched and fleed at about three weeks but remain with the parents to two to three months. And they're so sweet, much smaller than snowy owls, but beautiful. We are here at the Red Deer. I'm going to read a little bit about them. The Red Deer is the largest UK land mammal and is native to our shores. The autumn rut is an impressive wildlife spectacular when the male sizes up each other by roaring or shrotting, at first without violence, but this can soon escalate to fighting when interlocked with the antlers. And a stag can weigh up to 240 kilograms and a hind, which is a female, up to 170 kilograms. Only a stag has antlers, which only starts to grow in spring, but shed at the end of winter the following year. The antlers are composed of bone which grows about 2.5 centimetres per day. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with a lovely view of these beautiful red deer. Okay, we are here at the bison sadly hunted to extinction in Europe, with the last remaining wild bison being shot in 1927. They are now being reintroduced to, into many European countries through its successful capture breeding program. Bison feed mainly on grasslands and will browse on shoots and leaves. The rutting season is from August to October, with the cows giving birth to one calf 264 days later. Okay, so I'll just leave you with a little video of them. I was quite surprised how big they are. So we have just found the wild boar. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the wild boar. The, the ancestors of the domestic pig. The males have four grown tusks, which are used for fighting off other males in the breeding season. They were hunted to extinction in the 1600s, but were reintroduced for meat farming with their inevitable escapees they are now found in many UK woodlands and I'll just leave a little video of them. Okay, so here we have the red neck wallabies. A group of wallabies is called a mob. But this species is mainly solitary, often coming together to feed in the late afternoon and in the evenings. 
A young wallaby, or joey, lives in its mother's pouch for nine months, but will, but will continue to feed from her for another six months. A female wallaby is called a doe, a flyer, or a jill. Fun fact, wallaby mothers can have a baby developing <laughs> in the womb, a newborn in a pouch, suckling milk, and an older joey, out the pouch who still feeds from her until weaning at about 18 months old all at once. Oh, wow, how cool is that? Who gay? Okay, so we are at the walls now. I know if my dad was here, he would be so happy because he is crazy about walls. So we're gonna make sure that we try and get some really good pictures. But as you can see, they are behind me and uh, they know that the tea time's coming up. So they, um, they're kind of waiting um, and following the keepers around at the minute because they've gone to feed some other animals so they thought they were getting lucky, they're not. So they've got to wait a little bit longer so we thought we'd jump in there and do a little bit about them um, before the keepers come back with their food. I just want to share some information about the, uh, the grey wolf. Um, they're well known for their family life, heritage. The dominant wolf is called the alpha male and is a pack leader to 12 to 15 wolves. And the Omega Wolf being the most submissive of the pack. Known as keystone predators, they're a regulated herd animals by taking out the sick and the weak animals. Fun fact, their spine tingly howl attracts the attention of the whole pack so keeping each other safe and alert and in contact with each other. The wolf's sense of smell is a hundred times better than a human sense of smell and can smell animals up to one mile away. And this morning when we turned up, we actually heard them howling and they sounded amazing. Unfortunately, we didn't get that on camera, but oh my goodness. They're so lovely. So we're just gonna let you see the wolves if we can and uh, carry on. Hi guys, so we have come to the end of our visit today at the New Forest Wildlife Park. We have had such an amazing day, such a great opportunity to go around and share with others what to expect whilst visiting and showing how accessible it is, what they offer here and also as you've seen how the mobility scooter works on the ground here, what toilets are like. Um, and the ramps they put in place and the other things that they offer. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the New Forest Wildlife Park for letting us come along today to visit, to share with others what to expect. I'd also like to say a big thank you to Hubby for doing the camera and I'd also like to say thank you to you guys for helping support our channel. And don't forget, if you've only just joined, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That really helps support Rara's Ventures. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog visiting New Forest Wildlife Park. We look forward to seeing you next month with more Rara's Adventures. Bye!